Okay, let's welcome our next group. Hi everyone, we are group 30 and we have three members of our group, Joanne, Avi, and uh, Our project is distributed reinforcement learning and the presentation will be in three parts, but I will give a brief introduction of reinforcement learning and then uh, Johan will introduce the algorithm that's being implemented and then Avi will show how we can use it. Uh, so the goal of the project is that we want to adapt the reinforcement learning of library stable based on three to scale to the distributed setting using horrible and spark. Uh, the stable based on three is a collection of many reinforcement learning algorithms. And we implemented two of them and we made them distributed and then we investigate the empirical speed up and convergence rate of them. Uh, so what is reinforcement learning? Uh, reinforcement learning is one of the three basic machine learning paradigms together with supervised learning and unsupervised learning. And uh, the goal of reinforcement learning is that we want to uh, learn how to make decisions based on rewarding the desired behaviors and punishing the undesired ones. Uh, there are many cases in the real life that we want to use reinforcement learning. For example, in uh, autonomous driving and recommendation system and when you want to play some strategy games. And what's important here is that we we have to find a balance between the exploration and exploitation, which means you want to find some balance, uh, whether you want to take the actions that you believe to be the best according to your current knowledge, or whether you want to take some actions, uh, take some uh, like adventures that could possibly uh, have a better result. Uh, so this is the what reinforcement learning in general. Uh, when we want to develop the reinforcement learning algorithms, we usually use this gymnasium. Uh, so, so this has many reinforcement learning environments. Uh, for example, it has many Atari games and it has this uh, multi-joint dynamic with contact, which is a physics engine for uh, robotics and biomechanics. And this toy texts are some very simple environments with discrete states and actions, but I don't really know what is the goal of this, but it's very easy. And it, it also has some uh, classical control problems. Uh, this, this box to the are also some games based on uh, physics control. And, and here are some important definitions of reinforcement learning. So if we take this uh, problem of card pole as an example, where your card can move uh, on this frictionless track and then a pole is attached to that, our goal is to keep the pole uh, upright as long as possible. So in this case, the action space would be whether you want to push the card to the right or to the left. And then your observation space is the position and the velocity, the velocity of the cart and the angle and angular velocity of the pole. And for the reward, since, since our goal is to keep the pole upright for as long as possible, uh, we get a reward of one after each step that we take. And we also need to know where to start and when to end in order to train the reinforcement learning. So for the start state, we uh, give each of the observation a uniformly random value within a small range. And uh, we terminate the episode when your uh, your position of the cart or your angular of the pole is larger than some threshold. And finally, the time step is defined as a action observation uh, 
like circle and uh, here your, your agent performs some actions in the environment and then uh, it observes how the environment changes accordingly. And we use the stable baseline three to implement our reinforcement learning. So stable baseline three is a uniform unifying structure for many algorithms and it has uni unified code cell while documented function and classes. And uh, we can have a look at your website also. So this is how it looks. Uh, this is just basically what I just said. So, so yeah. But uh, you have a user guide almost for everything, introduction, examples, and uh, uh, everything. And you also have uh, the reinforcement learning algorithm that it implemented. So if we go to one of them, yeah, it has some introduction of this algorithm. And then you have the arrangement paper, uh, examples of how to use it and some document of the classes. Very comprehensive and very easy to implement. And we implement two of the algorithms that is proximal policy optimization and soft actor critic. And after that, we make them distributed using Parable. Yeah, so just add and make a, the previous group talked a lot about Parable already, but it's basically a, a distributed deep learning training framework which is available for a bunch of different backends. We use PyTorch, but it's also available for like TensorFlow, DynamicsNet, and some others. Um, and yeah, we use the same runner as the others. They, we use this uh, Horobot runner that connects us to Spark, and yeah, Horobot internally uses OpenMPI to launch these kind of Spark jobs. I think since <laughs> we have a pretty long discussion by the previous group. I will not go into too much detail about it, uh, but Ivy will talk more in detail about exactly how we use Horrible because there are some specifics when we do reinforcement learning. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the first of the algorithms we made distributed, just the outline of the algorithm. So the first one was proximal policy optimization or PPL for short. So the PPO algorithm is a quite simple uh, algorithm. The basic principle is, let's say we have a bunch of agents or a bunch of uh, yeah, reinforcement learning agents. We send them out into the world. They all have the same parameters. They all have some kind of randomized environment. So the environment is not exactly the same each time. They all go out there and do their best with their current policy. Uh, so these are called rollouts. They just do their thing for a while. So you can see this is step one. So on our policy, we run in these environments. Uh, we compute something called advantage estimates. This is basically how good the agents are doing compared to what we would expect them to do. And two, so this first thing you can see is kind of embarrassingly parallel because the agents don't need to speak to each other at all. But then in the second step, we have recorded all this data. So all the different agents recorded what happened to them and what rewards they got and so on. In the second step, we need to optimize the objective. The objective is the main thing with PPO. So, uh, yeah, so just for record, pi here is the policy. And that is one of the P's. The proximal, I don't know why it's called proximal, but maybe some mathematician would know. Uh, but the main thing with PPO is this objective on the top here. So basically what you're trying to optimize in PPO is some kind of, uh, uh, let's say, you're, you're trying to optimize how much better your new policy is compared to the old one. But you are at the same time saying, don't go too far. So it's kind of a trust region method. 
and how it's implemented most commonly is something called a clipped version, which is basically saying, uh, uh, yeah, you might say that Proximities close by, right? Proximities or something. Yeah, yeah so maybe the maybe this epsilon is the proximity. Yeah. It's a little bit unclear, but basically this RT is basically like the fraction of how often the new agent would do something compared to how often the old agent would do something. And then we want this fraction, we want to increase this fraction when we have an advantage, and we want to decrease it when we have a disadvantage, uh, but we constrain it. So we say that don't go too far away. So we constrain it in this clip and then the gradients kind of stop when we get to this clip. Uh, and when we do this, we have a bunch of agents. They are all collecting, uh, they're all optimizing this objective on their own, but then the gradients need to be uh, summed or yeah, uh, reduced. Uh, and now we will talk a bit more about how you do this in the distributed setting later. So yeah, then you basically just repeat this. Uh, what's interesting is PPO is like an on-policy algorithm. So this means you collect the data with the current policy, you train on that, and then you throw that data away. You like never look at it again, which is kind of interesting. Uh, the next we will discuss is the soft actor critic or SAC method. And it's soft uh, because you have an entropy term here, which is basically saying the policy should never be too sure of itself. So this can be related back to what you should said about like you always want the agent to explore. And it seems that it's also empirically good to make the convergence good. Uh, so yeah, you want to maximize the reward and maximize the entropy at the same time with some trade-off. In this alpha, we will actually learn. Uh, but yeah, so here instead we have an off-policy algorithm. And what this means is that we, we collect data, but we have some kind of buffer that just keeps all the data that we have had with previous policies as well. So we basically just kind of take a single step for each agent uh, and then add to this large buffer or database. And then we take a gradient step. So here we need to communicate between all the agents again. Uh, and we also have like a bunch of networks in this case. So here we have a queue function, here we have the policy, and here we have also, they find a really nice way how you can formulate a loss on predicting alpha, uh, which is kind of cool. So you also have some way of optimizing alpha here. So that is basically what you do. Uh, and now, yeah, thanks. Uh, you want to say or uh, maybe point. Yeah, I don't think I need to <laughs> Yeah, so uh, the basic idea uh, is distributed is to Create an instance of, uh, of the model uh, in each node that we have. And yeah, each uh, model also has its own accompanying uh, environment. So, what you see here is uh, this corporal environment. Uh, the agent performs some, some actions with it. And this is purely local. Uh, and the only thing that they need to communicate then is are the gradients. Uh, so, I think this looks a bit similar to the federated learning case, except you uh, synchronize the, the model weights, but here we uh, yeah, average the gradients, uh, which is quite expensive because we need to do this uh, in a reduced fashion because we need to make sure that the mo all of the models are the same because if they are not, then we would essentially be training like different models on all the nodes, but we want to basically have the same training setting, just be able to you know, spread it out on a bunch of different nodes. So yeah, we start by making sure that the the model is the same from the beginning, and then that we uh, you know, average the gradients and perform the same gradient step uh, on all the nodes, which is then done locally. Uh, yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this is another illustration of what's happening. So you can essentially divide this 
methods into these four steps. So you first collect some data, uh, and then you draw some batch that you then compute your gradients on, uh, update your model, and then yeah, repeat this. And in the PPO case, you uh, you do a bunch of these data collection steps. So you take a step and then report what happened. Uh, in the soft active critic case, you can collect one uh, step and then put that into your uh, circular buffer. Uh, and then uh, in the multi-process case, it looks like this. So yeah, you, you basically do the same thing, but each time you compute the gradient, you need to make sure that they are the same. Uh, and then, so so we wanted uh, the training setting to be to be the same, you know, independent of how many nodes we have, uh, because uh, you shouldn't have to think about your hyperparameters if you have a huge cluster or just a single laptop. I mean, if you can just use the same parameters. Uh, so, in order to to do that, we so you can see that uh, with this uh, rollout buffer size, we can just divide that by the number of nodes. Uh, then we will you know, have the effective buffer size would be the same. Uh, and then another thing, so when we compute the gradient, uh, we want to you know, have the same batch size. That would uh, that would mean that each gradient step would you know, have the same kind of noise. Uh, but that isn't too scalable since if we, we could have a lot of uh, nodes and maybe our model is very large or something, so we, we cannot have a really big batch size. So, so we instead uh, multiply the learning rate, uh, learning rate with with the number of uh, yeah, nodes, and this is you know, not exactly the same, but typically this this will lead to the same behavior. Uh, yeah. yeah, and here here is a short overview of uh, what a parallelization looks like for the two uh, algorithms. So. Uh, in the DPPO or PPO case, we call it yeah, distributed PPO when we distribute it. So DPPO, we yeah, you know, start by collecting a bunch of data, and here it's uh, clear that uh, we do a bunch of steps. Uh, and then after that, we do a bunch of gradient computations or gradient steps. So uh, and the difference to the soft active critic case is that we, we basically alternate between the, between the two steps and then yeah, keep this rolling buffer that it, uh, we, we don't throw away the data immediately. So, how much time do I have? Oh, you have seven minutes and 26 seconds. Oh, that's great. Uh, yeah, okay, so uh, uh, in practice, then, how, how, how did you do this? So it's, yeah, I think this is kind of exactly the same, basically, as the previous group. You, uh, or it makes it really easy to, to do this. So what you do is basically that you wrap your, your optimizer uh, in this horrible distributed optimizer. Uh, and this, I think, puts some hook on the uh, gradient step that when we, let's see here, yeah, when we compute the gradient, it's automatically then it does this all reduce for us. And uh, when we have wrapped our optimizer, we can you know, basically just use our training scripts the same way. Uh, and yeah, we, we need to make sure that we, uh, in the beginning, uh, broadcast our initial state to, to have the same one from the beginning and then the optimize the state as well. And then, yeah, we define our uh, training function, which we then call called using this horrible runner, uh, choose the size. And I think uh, there are some, uh, some details that I showed. Is this the... Uh, so, uh, so, so one thing with PPO is that it has, it uses this uh, gradient clipping. Uh, and this is something that we had to take into account. Yeah, so. Here, so here is where the uh, optimization happens. So we have uh, we have computed our loss. Uh, just no. so yeah, theorem is just to uh, say that 
how we are computing in gradients, basically. So throw away, throw away the old ones. Uh, we do our backward step, which then that computes the gradients. Uh, and then in the original uh, you know, code, we have we immediately do this clip grab norm, which uh, yeah, we, we don't want to take too too big of a step, so we clip the gradients, but if we do this before we synchronize the gradients, then we will you know, get some some yeah, different behavior basically. So we, we have to make sure that we first synchronize the gradients uh, and then clip. So so that would mean that we get the full like you know global uh, gradients which are which will now be the same across all the nodes and then that we clip them so the shaping will be the same. And then we have to include this uh, skip synchronize, which just tells the horrible optimizer that yeah, you don't need to synchronize the gradients because we we know that we have the same gradients. Uh, yeah, another uh, thing with the soft active critic is that it uses three optimizers, uh, which has problems uh, where. Uh, yeah, so I think there are there is something that that is shared between the uh, yeah so, so we have there's a policy network and a, a value network, and I think they share somehow the computations in the in the, the gradient step. So we so that that may made it problematic with problems. So we have to account for that. But first of all, we uh, yeah the, the in, initialization looks a bit uh, more complicated as well. I don't think I think I'm too much detail here, but. Uh, yeah, maybe this isn't. But someone can clone this and and run it on a cluster, like. Uh, yeah. In our code or yeah, this yeah. Not, yeah. I mean, yeah, this runs in the cluster. Okay. So. And and if you put down like uh, this for everyone, please put down like things like the ML runtime and data breaks and any of these libraries. You know, just put them somewhere in the beginning so that it can be reproduced by even yourself or someone else in the future. All right. Yeah. Did we have like requirements? requirements? Yeah, yeah. I would say yeah, requirements. Something like this, so that someone in the future does not to kind of. Yeah, right. I guess ours all, only works on cluster three. Yeah, this was really. Yeah, it, was, yeah, it, was, it worked on some cluster, yeah, but just copying yeah, the yeah, ML yeah, runtime. Yeah, and yeah. And all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure if this is too interesting, but we basically had to synchronize the the second uh, optimizer after performing the the optimizer step in the first optimizer for some reason. Moreover, uh, there's a bunch of GitHub issues that you can read if you're interested. But basically, it's issues where parameters are getting gradients multiple times. Huh? If you have multiple optimizers. Yeah. Question. Yeah, and uh, could you exploit this to learn like divergent policies? Because at the moment you're synchronizing gradients, you're kind of converging, but presumably there's more than one optimal policy in the world. Um, I don't think so. Yeah, I mean, if we just didn't sync to the gradients, that would happen. Yeah, or like sync if it's, they're close enough, but then I don't. I mean, if they're close enough, I guess you can do some weight. Average in like average weights between the models, maybe, but I'm not really sure. Uh, or you, I mean, an, an idea that I had is that you could do some model distillation if you have, you know, a bunch of different models. If you try to do some like, distill with these into some, some 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 new model that kind of have have the benefits of the whole. I have another question for the, yep. the your exploration. Are there alternatives to like this entropy based exploration? Yes. So a very common uh, thing to do is to do uh, epsilon greedy, which means that in some fraction epsilon of the cases you do a random step, a random action, and then in the other ones you do the the, the optimal or the uh, the action that the policy says is the. Are there any that you like a systematic? Search. Or like this is the way you know, like uh, yeah, I mean, this is if there's a practice space that's like really far away from everything else. That's the value. 
Sorry, can you repeat? So if it's exploration, then yeah, I would think that like okay, it's good to explore stuff that's far away. Ah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Then you would have to do a, a lot of random actions, I guess, to to end up in that state. Yeah. So, so I don't think there are alternatives to random. I think there is curiosity, which is like a concept as well. It tries to maximize like how unexpected the new environment that you find yourself in is compared to some network. Okay, so <laughs> let's solve it. Uh, it uh, worked. Yeah, it worked. So basically, <laughs> the first plot should be the same. It means that we have the same training setting. In the other one, we get faster convergence speed. That's all speed up next. And here are some trained agents. So yeah. <laughs> that's wow, that's cool. I want to see you balance a double pendulum with this. Yeah, I think there is uh, a well. We actually have a physical double pendulum hanging outside my office with electronic controllers and optical encoders. And, uh, but that's just to let go. Yeah. I think if you want to do that distributed, you need to have multiple. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, and I have sent because it, it 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 just streams data. It has a mercury switch, like my so I'm graph engineering kids in New Zealand did this. So the, the game is actually kind of fun. So you, you, if you have multiple of them, you can hang it, and then a bunch of people can come and then just sort of release them from the same position, right? And uh, that's the game. So can you actually release it from exactly the same position up to measure? You know, in this, um, what will quickly happen is two releases by the same person, although what you measure is identical, it will quickly start diverging, right? Because it's a, it's a dynamical system, but the lab not constant is very high for it. So, um, you know, so you, so we sort of did this thing where, you know, people would come and play a game and who, who has the, who has the most neuromuscular control. Um, so I'm blabbering about this because uh, we will try to connect all of this and do a tiny pitch anyway later. So there are no other questions. Um, let's move on to the next pitch. So. Uh, Let's continue on because Sophia is here. Oh, yeah. okay. So we'll, you know, we'll continue on with this pitch. We're gonna try to combine a lot of the thoughts and then try to come up with a little idea of selling Ericsson something. So this is really nice. <laughs> Reinforcement learning distributed can be tapped there, you know, optimization. So, yeah. 